Close your eyes and watch your breath. Hold on to the breath all the way in, all the way out. That doesn't mean you squeeze it, but it means that you stick with it. Anything else that comes by, you don't catch it. Just let it go. Let it go. Hold on to this one thing. We're told so much about how the Buddha teaches us to let go. But there are certain things you've got to hold on to. You want to hold on to your mindfulness, hold on to your concentration, hold on to your discernment, hold on to your precepts. Because these things are of real value. It's as if we're going to be traveling to another country. And our actions are what we put in our suitcases. We live in the same world here. But sitting here right now, some people are happy, some people are not so happy, some people are feeling lots of pleasure, other people are feeling some pain. Where does it come from? It comes from our actions. It's like we arrived in this lifetime with a suitcase of our actions from the past. We open them up and some of them are, are there to help us and some of them are going to cause us trouble. If you hold on to things like wealth, things like just your survival at all costs, then you end up doing all kinds of things, stashing away in, in your luggage. And at the very best, when you get to the other side, there's nothing there. And at the very worst, there's some really bad things. Because you've been holding on to things that can't, you can't take with you. What you do take with you and what provides for you when you go is the sum total of your actions. So make sure you're adding good ones all the time. This is why we meditate, to put the mind in shape. So when it can see something that's right and something's wrong, it has the discernment to be sure of what's right and what's wrong. And then the strength of character to do only what's right and to abandon what's wrong. So you work on holding on to the breath, holding on to something that really will be of value. Because other times you hold on to things and you end up hurting yourself with them, hurting other people. But the things the Buddha recommends for our own safety, these don't harm anybody at all. That's the quality of his teachings. They're totally harmless. You follow them and you don't cause any trouble for anyone in the world. You don't cause any trouble for yourself. So as I go through life holding on, as we were born, we have to hold on to our parents, hold on to whatever we can just to walk. We have to hold on to things. And as we get better and better, we can learn how to depend on ourselves physically. Now we have to learn how to depend on ourselves mentally as well. That means knowing what to hold on to, what, what to let go of. And you see it a lot more clearly when you've got the mind still, with a sense of well-being. And things you used to think would, were well-being, you begin to realize there's not so much well-being there at all. And sometimes they involve with some unskillful karma. But here you're doing nothing but what's skillful and what's nourishing for the mind. And it doesn't have a need for those other things. This is how you wean yourself off. This is how we grow up as people. Just because our bodies mature when we're around 18 or 20 doesn't mean our minds are mature yet. Sometimes we have to keep working on making our minds mature all the way to the end. But it's good work. The more quickly you can do it, the better, but you keep at it. Because the body's going to have to be left at some point, and what you have left are the qualities of the mind, and those go with you. So make sure you build good qualities in the mind by doing good actions. That's what you can really hold on to in this life. Otherwise, everything else just slips through your fingers. But this is something that's always there for you, the solidity of the mind. So invest as much time and energy as you can in making sure that this is solid and something you can hold on to. So when the time comes to let everything else go, you've still got something really good.